<laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are, and we are actually taking a look at the Shadow Priest. Very fun, very, very fun spec to end up playing with all the different changes. And there's a couple reasons why. We'll go into that, but first I want to end up talking about a few of the passives in this quick guide. The very first one that we're going to talk about is Void Eruption. Some of you may have been following and seen some of the old beta stuff, but what this actually is is the way to enter your void form. For those of you that have been playing it on the 7.0.3 pre-legion, you already know this. But it's going to do some uh, shadow damage to all the targets that are actually afflicted by either your Shadow Word Pain and Vampire Touch. And it also allows you to enter Void Form. Very simple, very easy to end up doing, but that's going to be Void Eruption. The next thing that we need to talk about is going to be Void Form itself. Now when you activate Void Form or Void Eruption, it's going to put you in a Void Form. And what it's going to do is increase all the damage you deal by a flat 20%. It'll also reduce the cooldown on Mind Blast by 3 seconds and grant an additional 1% haste every 1 second through Lingering Insanity. And we'll go over that a little more here in a minute. Your Insanity will drain increasingly fast until it reaches 0 and Void Form ends. Basically, the way this ends up working, the longer you're in there, yes, the more haste you will end up getting, but at the same time, you will also lose Insanity quite quickly. Normally, right now, I've seen... I think at the most, without using Surrender to Madness, you're looking at right around the highest about 26 stacks without the artifact. This thing's going to work out a lot better once it gets its artifact in Legion. Now the next thing we're going to talk about is what Void Eruption actually turns into once you hit Void Form. You hit Void Eruption, it's going to put you into Void Form, and then Void Eruption is going to turn into an ability called Void Bolt. It is an instant cast on a very short cooldown and that is reduced by haste. It generates 16 insanity and also does a very solid amount of damage and refreshes both Shadow Word Pain and Vampiric Touch to their original duration. This helps you quite a bit, especially in multi-dot situations, saving you a bunch of global cooldowns and just doing an absolute insane amount of damage. And then finally, the last thing we're going to end up talking about for the passive is going to be the new Mastery. It's had a huge rework, and currently where it stands is Mastery Madness, and it increases the damage of your Shadow Word Pain, Vampiric Touch, and Void Bolt by f X amount of percent. Huge damage increase, but really a little on the weak side since it only affects your Dots and Void Bolt. Good damage, but it's really going to be better in a multi-dot situation, which we'll go over here in a few minutes also. Now we're going to swing right into the Talents. And your level 15 row, your talent of choice is going to be Twist of Fate, mainly because a lot of the times you're going to see yourself doing most of your damage in that execute range of under 35%. Helps out quite a bit. Fortress of Mind's also very good for the simple fact that if the fight's lasting longer than, let's say, 3 minutes, Fortress of Mind may start peeking ahead just for the generation, and you're not going to be in the execute phase as long. If it's under you can usually end up seeing a pretty solid execute phase and making it twist of fate the top choice in most situations including trash shadow word void on the other hand it's really kind of awkward and it seems to play out alright in questing or just doing general small solo content but other than that not very strong level 30 you have mania the speed increase just isn't worth it you're you're kind of counterproductive because once you hit your higher stacks of insanity you're gonna wanna go straight into void form to do the additional instead of running around using the speed buff. Body and Soul on their hand, with the low cooldown on shield, it not only gives you a reason to use your shield to end up reducing damage, but it also gives you a reason to increase your speed. And then Masochism, again, that's going to be pretty solid for questing. It's going to allow you to heal yourself, and instead of taking that ticking dot damage back down for half of the heal, it's going to actually make it a heal over time instead. Level 45, Mind Bomb is going to be the choice here because the stun is going to be more effective than the other two. And the reason for that is Psychic Voice, if you're fearing in a raid you're doing something wrong because you're most likely going to end up pulling, especially in progression, you're going to pull another group and it's going to more than likely cause a wipe. And then Dominate Mind, really you can end up using this, it's not too bad, it gives you a pet but it feels again more for the questing side of it as a lot of the mobs that you end up doing are not affected in raid content. Level 60 you have Void Lord, which again feels more like it's for questing than anything else. It does not seem to fit 
in the actual raid situations. Even though it does let your haste persist through, you really don't need the haste until later on. Reaper of Souls is by far the best talent just for the simple fact it's going to help you during your execute phase. It, one, it makes it instead of 20%, it's going to be 35%, and you're going to generate a ton of additional insanity through this. Now, you won't see a whole hell of a lot until you get to that point, but that's going to really play well with a couple of the other talents. Void Ray makes a solid choice also just for the simple fact if you have Archimonde's Trinket, it plays out pretty decent that way, but currently Reaper Soul seems to be the better way to go in a shorter fight. Level 75, Sandlin. The increased damage on Vampiric Touch and the increased heal currently on uh, Vamp Embrace just doesn't do enough. Auspicious Spirits really plays into the rotation well, as to where it's going to not only increase your spirit damage whenever your Shadow Word Pain crits, but you're also going to see 5 insanity per each one. So if you've got enough haste and crit, you should see your insanity rolling pretty crazy, especially in multi-dot situations. And then Shadowy Insight, I have a mixed feeling on this. If you're getting a decent amount of procs, it's fine, but the RNG flavor there is not as good as what it should be, and the Auspicious Spirits just seems to really take over. Level 90, you have Power Infusion. It is great for dungeons. Dungeon bosses only. That's about it. Now, if you're looking at these really short burst dungeons, Power Infusion does really damn good on them. In a raid scenario, no, it doesn't. And then in your dungeons, you have Shadow Crash. Shadow Crash is way better than Power Infusion, so it Power Infusion kind of gets bumped right off the charts. Shadow Crash does a ton of damage every 30 seconds on mass pulls. So if you're doing some huge mass pulls, or even if you're doing Mythic Dungeons and you're just pulling stuff, you're going to end up seeing that Shadow Crash is very beneficial on an AoE situation that really helps boost your actual trash damage, helping the whole entire group out. And then Mindbender is the top in most raid boss situations. The reason for this is, one, it's a one minute cooldown, two, it lines up fairly well with most of your void forms, and three, it generates insanity. A good amount of insanity and it plays well and we'll go over the general rotation real soon. Level 100, Legacy of the Void, it is a very solid choice. What it's going to do is instead of having to cap out at 100 insanity, it's going to let you use Void Eruption at 70 insanity and proceed onto your nuke stage a lot faster. It's a very solid alternative if you do not have enough haste to maintain Surrender to Madness. Now the next one up is Mind Spike. Mind Spike is okay. It really is if you're in a dungeon situation yet again and you're doing a lot of cleave damage. And I mean, they have to be stacked up. It has to be a lot of adds for it to really take over. As where Legacy of the Void and just multi-dotting in most situations is going to still beat out Mind Spike. And then Surrender to Madness. Oh boy. So this thing's gotten a lot of controversy. But it is fun as hell. It is probably by far one of the heaviest cooldowns we have left in game. It does very, very solid, and what it's going to do is it's going to increase your insanity generation by 200% while in void form after you use this. Now, the trick to this is making sure that you stay in this as long as possible because as soon as it's done, you die. And it's great because it's over the top death, like if you were a hunter doing feign death. You know how you've got that little bit of an increased, ah! that's exactly what they're doing. This ability is pretty awesome. I'm showing some footage here for you, so hopefully you end up getting to see it. It plays out very well, but you have to have a very high haste crit ratio for this thing to really take off. If you're low on haste, you're gonna die. The most I could get was 60 stacks, because my priest is not geared, and it does not have enough haste to really pull this off. But it was fun. It was really fun, and eventually you get to the point to where you're just spamming Void Bolt, waiting for that sudden squeal of doom, and it's just absolutely insane to end up seeing. But that is going to cover our talents. Let's go ahead and move right on into our general rotation. So what you're looking at is a priority list more than an actual rotation, just like every other class right now. And this is what your priority list is going to be currently. You're looking at getting your Void Eruption off and your Void Bolt every time it's off cooldown and you're going to want to use this as soon as it's available. As soon as you have enough insanity to use Void Eruption and go into Void Form, 
that is your top priority no matter what. Second on the list is going to be Mind Blast. Shadow Word Death's going to take third place in the priority list because you're going to want to use it whenever it's available. It does a lot of additional damage. And when it's talented, it's also generating a lot of additional insanity. This is only going to be usable at 20% or if talented, 35% and you just want that additional damage. Then you have Shadow Word Pain. Basically, you're just going to want to end up applying this and maintaining it to all targets that will live for most of the duration of the spell itself. Vampiric Touch, same as Shadow Word Pain. Then you have Mind Flame, Mind Spike. They're going to be your filler for single target and spread fights, so your council fights, stuff like that where you have things separated. Mind Seer is going to actually replace Mind Flayer, Mind Spike on 3 plus mobs when stacked together. It hits like a wet noodle, doesn't do any damage at all, but what you're looking at is the insanity generation and how long you can actually maintain in void form or get back into void form by doing Mind Seer over it. Now let's get to the cooldowns. You've got Shadow Fiend or the Mind Bender, depending on how you talent. And you're going to want to use it on cooldown when in void form after 12 stacks of Lingering Insanity. Or 40 stacks if you're using Surrender to Madness. The reason for this is that's when you're going to get your best little niche area of how to end up using this and try and stay into surrender to madness longer your void form longer so then we have lingering insanity down here and this is not an actual ability but a buff that you must control this is the reason why you want to stay in void form as long as possible the longer you're in there you gain one percent haste every second while in void form and persist till you re-enter void form it times out or you just die this is a great ability and one of the main reasons why Surrender to Madness is so strong right now. Surrender to Madness is going to make it to where you're in there and you're going to have 60, 70, 80, 100% increase haste. What they call the 100 club where you're at 100% haste and you're just spamming Void Bolt non-stop. Praying that you end up killing the boss before you fall over dead. Really fun gameplay out of this. Love this spec completely. Let's take a look at the stats. So here's a general stat priority for the Shadow Priest and what we're really looking into is obviously Intel and Spell Power are going to be the top. Just like any caster, this is what you're looking for no matter what. This takes priority on how much you're getting overall damage. Now with Haste, this takes a very solid second for the simple fact it's reducing the time between each tick of your dots. It's reducing the cooldown on certain abilities like Mind Blast and then you've got Void Bolt that will end up being reduced which is going to cause a lot of additional insanity and it's also going to produce a lot of additional damage and keep you in that void form for much longer increasing how many lingering insanity stacks you end up getting. The other reason why it's really good is because it also reduces the channel time on your Mind Flay. Your Mind Flay is actually going to continue so if you do have to do a filler Again, more insanity generation, the better off you are. Crit is going to be a very solid second for many different reasons. Also, crit is going to 1, just be a generalized random stat that increases your damage, so the more you have, the better off you are. And the other reason is auspicious spirits. As you end up critting with your Shadow Word Pain, you're going to have an additional spirit come out that's going to do additional damage and also generate additional insanity. Really, it ties well with haste. But it is underneath haste because haste is generally going to keep you in void form much, much longer. Then you have versatility, which is a generalized damage increase, and mastery is just underneath it. Now you'll swap those two if you're doing any multi-dot cleaving. I prefer mastery over versatility because it helps out in a multi-dot situation, as in trash or anything like that, to where you can just maintain your dots a little bit better in that situation. So I'm going to do a little bit of talking on the actual gameplay of this spec and the reason for that is how it's playing out. In a single target situation, it's very damn fun. You want to keep up your dots, you want to stay in void form as long as possible. This class is great because it gives you a common goal of what you're supposed to end up doing and people seem to love those little hurdles of how to end up competing and getting better. Oh, I've got 60 stacks, I've got 70 stacks. It plays well into this and it gives a lot of people that little competition feel of how well they can end up doing with their class. Very solid and it, that seems to be missing from a lot of the specs nowadays. It's not how well I can end up doing with the class 
or there's no real benefit to push. Most classes are doing fairly well and balanced, but in a good player's hands, the Shadow Priest is doing extremely well due to Surrender to Madness and its insane cooldown. In a single target situation, this is absolutely fun as hell. In multi-dot, it's great and you will see the damage just blow up. I'd say right around four targets is what I feel comfortable, four to five targets of doing a multi-dot situation to where you're putting both your Vampiric Touch and your Shadow Word Pain on four to five targets. You're hitting Void Form, you're getting in there and you're using your Void Bolt to actually refresh the dots. Just kind of make sure which one's getting ready to come off cooldown. And if you end up using Void Bolt, it's okay to end up losing Shadow Word Pain. Vampiric Touch, on the other hand, make sure you keep it up because the instant cast on Shadow Word Pain makes it less of a loss than if you actually have to throw up and spend a cast time on Vampiric Touch. A little bit different, but you can see some huge damage numbers by multi dotting on its own. Mind Seer, yes, it is still very weak in an AoE situation, but if you have four plus targets stacked up, it generates a ton of insanity that helps. In a trash situation, very fun, but can get frustrating sometimes with all the different dots. Or if you have a mob, uh, let's say, like one of the assassins in Hellfire Citadel, they do become a little bit more on the pain in the ass side to keep track of because they're bouncing all over the place. But it's just all part of being the Shadow Priest and actually being a dot class. Plays very damn good though. Single target, AoE, top notch, probably my favorite caster currently for the pre-Legion launch. With this, I hope you enjoyed yourself, and as always, thank you for watching.